Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Uh, I apologize for the delay. Um, you know, um, I'm trying to set up my uh, computer in front of me here. Uh, today, our topic is very simple. It's about, uh, you know, the funny logic of the God of Islam. Uh, in the front of us, in the screen, we have some verses in the Quran we are going to discuss. You know, when somebody speak to me about God, God don't speak stupid and he don't act stupid. But every verse in the Quran is a stupidity by itself. And, you know, uh, if you listen to, listen to the Muslims, they will tell you how amazing the Quran, I mean, science and miracle, which is all is garbage. In the front of me here, chapter 4, verse number 48, and the reason I'm talking about it, uh, you know, uh, a Muslim, he sent me uh, a request. And he's saying to me, uh, you know, he like what I say. And, uh, he, you know, he believed that I am being as best as I can to be truthful. But still he is not really, he, he want more proofs of what I am claiming. And he said, well, you know, as you know, the, the Quran, there is something nice about it. Uh, that Allah, he offered forgiveness. And uh, like as an example, if you are a person who commits sin, uh, you go and you do something good and Allah forgive you, which means the good thing, uh, they lead the, the, the good deeds, they lead the bad deeds. <clears throat> so I said, okay, you know, I'm going to make a video about this topic and see what you, what is your, your, your answer for this. In the front of us, there is chapter 4, verse number 48. In this chapter, there's something very funny. And very weird and I wish the Muslims they will be able to you know join us in this conversation and they can tell us what's happening let me be sure first that this is this video is working fine uh, for some reason it looked like it's not working fine yet I don't know is it interesting I'm trying to see in my phone that the, the screen I'm using is very small, very tiny. <clears throat> uh, let us see what we have here. Is the screen coming good for you guys? Is it coming good? Uh, let me know, please, if you have a problem. Anyway, so if we go back to the verse, I think it's it's fine. It's not the size, uh, correct size for the video, but you know what we can do. Uh, if we go back to the uh, to the Muslim uh, Quran, which is their own book, as you know, uh, we will find something very weird and very funny. And nobody can explain to us how this happened. Uh, I don't know why even this thing is not opening. Here we go. In Allah, la yaghfiru an yushrika bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dalik liman yasha. Translation. Chapter 4, verse number 48. Chapter 4, verse number 48. Uh, what the verse here is saying that Allah, He forgive any sin except the one who take partners with Him. Allah forgive any sin, any, anything, any sin you do, it doesn't matter, except taking partners with him. Now look how stupid this statement is. You see, if I say I forgive any sin except this, it means I forgive every sin except this. That's it. There's no other interpretation. It's the same as in the Bible says that the one who do uh, like insult the Holy Spirit, there is no forgiveness for him. That's it. It doesn't matter. You are a Christian, you are a Muslim, you are a Hindu, you are a Buddha. It doesn't matter. The one who insult the Holy Spirit, there is no forgiveness for him. So, if you ask a Muslim about this verse, he will say to you, oh, hold on. This is speaking about if you, uh, you know, uh, you like Christians, who believe that Jesus is God he's taking they are taking partners with Allah first of all we don't take partners with, with anyone 
for first of all we don't believe in Allah and I know some Muslim they will say do you know that the Arab, the Arab Christians in the Middle East they use the word Allah uh, when they read their Bible this is a translation and this is a false translation and the Arab Christians they've been forced to use the word Allah through 1400 years of the occupation of Isis imagine Isis enter your town in one week they will make you force you other you otherwise you that you would die to change the name or the word you use for speaking about your God otherwise you are dead so after 14 centuries of occupation and, and humiliation and filth and violence uh, who dare to use the front word otherwise if you read that the whole book in Aramaic and Hebrew we will not find the word Allah and the funny the Muslim they say to you that uh, some idiots they say to you that uh, the word Allah is diverted from the word Elohim and that is very stupid for, for a very simple reason I mean I don't know how donkey human being can be but sometimes the donkeys exceed the, the donkey level became a mule Elohim is not even a name of our God Elohim is a word mean gods not even God God it is diverted from the word il which is mean God so Elohim is not a name for our Lord you know one Moses has asked God what I will tell my people what's your name he said I am he didn't give him a name but some naive people they keep saying Elohim is our God Elohim I can say that like, because it's a unique word exists in our book no problem but it's not really a name Allah in the Quran supposedly is a name and we explained to you before what Allah mean it is two words com combined or combined between two words al which mean God and la which mean the name of the God and la is the moon God and there's no question about it you can search in Google and you can find the answer in two seconds in front of us here the Allah forgive not those who take partners you see Allah forgive what in this verse forgive any other sin how he forgive them those who repent the Quran says those who repent Allah forgive them okay but here is saying Allah forgive not those who take partners so you repent or you don't repent Allah will not forgive you isn't it? this is the most stupid thing all those who converted to Islam with Muhammad including Muhammad they took partners so how we can function this verse to make it simple, let me try to make the text bigger, if we can. Yeah, I think this is better. Umar ibn Khattab, Khalid ibn Walid, Abu Bakr, uh, you name it all of them all of them with no exception they used to worship partners beside the idol Allah so how now we will function this if you say to me Allah forgive anything except this but if you repent Allah forgive you this is mean this verse is a stupid statement it's not good in Arabic it's not good in English it's not good in any any language when I say let us say I have a bunch of kids in front of me and I say to them do everything except to break break in that thing there and if you do it I will never forgive you I mean it's, it's very simple logic that's it I just I will never forgive but here here he forgave everything else now how Allah forgive things in the Quran hmm? those who repent Allah forgive them you can go you know you can go type in the Quran the word repent And you will see that if you repent, Allah forgive you, supposedly. All right. Uh, all those verses in front of us, you can check them by one by one. You can freeze the screen. Uh, and you will see that repent is the way to be forgiven. Okay. So now if repent uh, is the way to be forgiven. And uh, repent is open for people. Then... What the point of saying nobody, uh, nobody will be forgiven if he, you know, if you commit uh, 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 like taking partners with God. It doesn't make sense, and it's very stupid logic. If we go back here, when you do not forgive those who take partners, and you forgive anything else, anything else will be forgiven in what conditions? The Quran answer all those verses 
if you repent as an example chapter 9 verse number 109 102 you know just an example but the Quran is full of those verses what is what is the conditions you repent you know read with me so okay if you repent or uh, you know if we repent then we will be forgiven and if we repent we are going to be accepted to be a, the a, a good ones and Allah will accept them to go to go to heaven but in this verse says it clearly that there's two conditions that there's someone or two two cases there is someone who take partners and that will not be forgiven it doesn't matter what he try and this person who if he repent he will be forgiven that's mean all the companion of Muhammad including Muhammad they are going to go to hell how someone claim that Quran is coming from God he's saying and he do such a stupid mistake that's an incredible stupidity I cannot find a reason for anyone to claim you know or speak of himself as his God and yet he say such a stupid thing like this this is beyond the stupidity and why Allah saying Allah forgive not those who take partners if you will forgive those who take partners if somebody want to say to me oh this is if you did not convert to Islam that's very stupid that's extremely very stupid because if you say to me those who will not convert to Islam Allah will not forgive their sin if they are taking partners will hear this part what you will do with this part is that for those who don't, con don't convert to Islam <laughs> because Allah don't forgive to those who don't convert to Islam anyway so it, you cannot say that it says clearly this is you see it's it's one verse Allah forgive not those who take partners and then he but he forgive those who do anything else anything else except taking partners so the forgiveness here is only a forgiveness for the believers so now how we will take Muhammad to heaven as we know all of us we know that Muhammad even the Quran witnessed that Muhammad was a pagan person who don't believe really in God uh, if we go in the Quran let us uh, let us do this we will find that Muhammad he do not know even what is faith what is belief what is religion what is God what is book he know nothing absolutely nothing let us see all right chapter 42 verse number 52 read with me carefully please and again this is the Muslim idiot translation And thus have we, uh, by our command, send inspiration to thee, to thee who, Muhammad, though knowest not before what was revelation and what was faith. Okay, that means Muhammad he will go to hell. Before this point, Muhammad, he do not know what revelation, which means he know nothing about the word of God. And here, this is exposed, this verse exposed, the lies, the Muslims, they keep saying to us that Muhammad was Abrahamic before he became a prophet that is a garbage what Abrahamic a person who is Abrahamic he know what faith is a person who is Abrahamic he knows what revelation is because revelation it must it doesn't have to be uh, a book of 10,000 pages revelation uh, you know if a prophet he is a prophet of God, of God and he said to me uh, let us say spoke to me for five minutes and this is supposed to be from God this is revelation so if Muhammad really he believed in the God of Abraham, then how this verse says you know not what revelation and you know not what is faith. So Muhammad entered this point at the end of the age of 40, as Muslims they claim he received his message at the age of 40. He have no idea what faith is about and what revelation is about. Now, based on this, and in the connection with the other verse which we spoke of, 
that the one who take partners with Allah, he will not be forgiven. Muhammad will be the first one to go to hell. Because obviously, for the last 40 years, Muhammad was a believer. You know, we can show you many uh, 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 verses. Muhammad came in from a pagan family. His father is a pagan. His mother is a pagan. His grandfather is a pagan. His cousins is pagans. All of them they are pagans. And Muhammad is one of them. And he himself, he, you know, he helped in building the Kaaba, according to many hadith, to the point like once there is a story says that Muhammad was carrying a rock uh, and then uh, the, uh, his dress fell down and he became naked. Why he became naked? Because he was dressing the clothes of going around the Kaaba, which is nakedness. You put a sheet around yourself, nothing. You don't wear anything. So Muhammad was practicing those things and he is one of them. And then we have the stories about the satanic verses where Muhammad, he worshipped the three daughters of the of, of the of Allah. And he says that those three daughters, their worship is a must and their intercession is needed. So now Muhammad, based, based on the Quran, he will not be forgiven. And he is going to go to hell. How we can solve this problem? For sure, there's no Muslim can solve it. The only way they will say to you here, well, Allah is speaking here to those who don't convert to Islam, but that is impossible. It doesn't say anything of that, simply. And that will be exposed. If you read the second part of the verse, what it says, Allah forgive anything else. Allah will forgive to who anyway? You see, let's say I take no partners with God. I don't even worship God. Let's say I'm an atheist. Is this verse speaking of me? That any other sin I will be forgiven? No. Allah forgive only the sin of Muslims. Allah will not forgive. Even in the hadith he says, Muhammad, that Allah will take the sin of the Muslims and he will place it, even if it's like mountains, and he will place it on the Christians. So only Muslims will be forgiven. So here we are talking about Muslim, Muslim 100%. Muslim in this side and Muslim in that side. If it's only in this side about Muslims and this side about non-Muslims, it still will not change anything because he will not forgive them if they convert to Islam too. And that's mean Muhammad and Omar and Abu Bakr and Khalid ibn Walid and all the big names in Islam and, uh, you know, you name it. All of them, they are going to go and end in hell. Always when we speak to Muslims about uh, uh, what what they think it is the word of God, we find that Muslims they don't even read their Quran and they have no idea what this Quran is about. You know, and the same verse, by the way, it appeared more than once. It's not only like one time. Uh, uh, if you go to chapter 4, verse 116, as an example, read with me carefully. It's the same garbage. 4, 116. Read. You know, what is that? What is that? How we can solve this problem? And you know, what the point of saying such a thing? That Allah will not forgive. If you are trying to guide me and take me to heaven, obviously the one who need guidance and no need forgiveness is the one who is not worshipping true worship. Right? So what the point of saying Allah will forgive not? The verse to be accurate, if Muhammad is a prophet of God, he should say, uh, Allah forgive all sin. You know, I can accept if if, uh, if the Quran says, okay, Allah forgive all sin except insulting Allah. No problem. But here is not about insulting. Nobody is insulting Allah. Those are Arab who worship gods beside Allah. Okay. So they worship Allah already. You see, if you go and read the Arab history, all of them they worship Allah, for He is, let us say, a uh, 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 shared God between all. And let us say He's the mo most common gods, and they worship other gods beside Him. So Allah here is saying to them, supposedly, according to the Quran, that if you worship beside me, I will not forgive you. He didn't say, if you worship the different God. And that is funny. That is very stupid. So how people will convert to Islam? And what the point of converting to Islam if I will not be forgiven anyway? If this is about after you convert, Allah forgive you, that's mean the one who wrote the Quran is stupid. He should say, Allah forgive not those who take partners unless you convert to Islam. It doesn't say that. 
both sides of the verses, as we show you, it's speaking about one thing that Allah forgive not if you take partners. And the Quran is full of stupid things. You cannot even imagine how mad sometimes this book can go. Uh, you know, uh, if you try to read the Quran slowly and try to think about it, you, you will find that this book is written by someone uh, is either high, is uh, drunk, uh, he is suffering from flight of thoughts, you know, flight of thought of somebody speaking of something and then he jumped from something to something. Uh, and the logic of the Quran is very funny. As an example here, if you uh, if you read the Quran in, in many verses, tons of verses, the same verses repeated, 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 repeated. I mean, this God, he have nothing to say. And they say to us, the Quran is an amazing language. If we if we search, as an example, the word Dar, hmm? if we search this word in the Quran, let me do that. Oh, let us type the word nafa. Nafa, which means benefit. All right. Let's make it all words. All right. You will see uh, many stupid things. Chapter two, verse number one, two, three. Allah will not. There is a day where 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 Allah will not accept intercession. Go and read the hadith where Muhammad he speak that in the judgment day. The only one his intercession is going to be accepted is Allah. If you search for the word Shafa in the Quran, just to show you how the, how this book studying this book a little bit will will lead you to to madness. I will pause the word Shafa. Shafa, which means intercession. Hmm? Okay, and be aware or prepare yourself for a day where intercession will not be accepted. Chapter 2, verse number 48. Read it. So the, the, the day of judgment, this day, there is no intercession will be accepted. So why Muhammad, he says, in the day of intercession, the Jews, they will come to Moses, and he will say, I cannot do intercede for you. And the Christian, they will come to Jesus, and he will say, I cannot intercede to you. Go to Muhammad. And then the Christians and the Jews and the Muslims, they will come to Muhammad, and Muhammad will intercede to his followers. I mean... If there is intercession or not, there is no intercession, but yet there is intercession. So it's a stupid book written with no meaning, with no thinking. It's a guy who keep talking and, you know, uh, uh, he say uh, what he contradict himself. So now if we have no intercession, is Muhammad, who is going to intercede for Muhammad for the time he was worshipping other God beside Allah? Who is going to intercede to Khadr al-Walid if there is no intercession? It, and and why you know why Muhammad in different verse in the Quran he says there is intercession because if you see like all those verses in front of us is speaking about no intercession no intercession no intercession all over okay now we will find different story. No, the Muslim translation is kind of funny. <clears throat> All those verses are speaking about intercession. Then look what he said. We showed you the verse saying that there's no intercession. It doesn't matter. There's no intercession. There's no intercession. All those verses previously. Now he says, chapter 34, verse number 23. He says, there's no intercession except to the one who Allah allowed. What? So what we will do now with the previous verses where he says there is no intercession. Do you see the word except? Just a few verses, all the verses before, it says there is no intercession, period. That's it. There's the day, that day when it comes, there is no intercession. Now Muhammad, he changed because he, he wanted to put himself as an intercessor so he can, he can uh, you know, perform what he promised. Tons of verses saying there is no intercession, and now for him it's time to switch to say, Oh, no, 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 accept, accept, and that is me. Because he wanna hire himself that he is God on earth. You see, when when I speak of intercession, I'm trying to convert to go to, to convince you of what? To convince you that you need a middleman, a middle person, 
happen. It's like a real estate agent. You know, there is a guy who want to sell his house and there is a real estate agent. He is the one who will make you go there and show you where is the property. So Muhammad here, he put an exception. But now what we would do with all the verses before saying there is no intercession. All those verses before. Huh? What we would do? Why Muhammad from the beginning did not say, well, except, where is the except? What happened? It's gone. It was uh, dropped by mistake. Allah forgot. On that day shall no intercession. I mean, it's very clear. In that day, there's no intercession. Then he says in different verses, after repeating many times the same verse, that there is no intercession, there is no intercession. Then he put himself suddenly in the middle of nowhere and he say, oh, except, except. If you go and take the word intercession, let us try to do it in English. You know? Search in English. All right. You will see there's tons of verses speaking about the intercession of Muhammad. All right. All those. Do you see this one as an example? Allah Apostle said, for every prophet, there is one invocation, which is definitely fulfilled by Allah. And I wish if Allah will, to keep my special invocation as to be the intercession for my followers. But the Quran says there is no intercession. So do we have intercession or not? It doesn't make sense. So we are talking about a book is not a stable. It's like, you know, it's like this book written. Uh, 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 imagine yourself, you are trying to write a book in a, in a ship and the ship is in the middle of the storm. So sometimes the A come to be B and the B became G and the G became D and the D became etc. Because the waves is the one writing the book. It's not you. You are sitting in a shaky table and the ship is going crazy. And the letters is going crazy with you. If we go again back to the Quran and we try to understand how Muhammad logic or his God logic work, you will find that there's no logic in this in this book. If the whole Quran is speaking of worshiping one God and he is the only one will forgive, all right. Then suddenly we find that Muhammad is speaking of himself to be the intercessor. What's the point of the intercession? You see, remember, I'm not talking about Christianity here. I'm talking about Islam. The Muslims, they flood us with, you Christians worship a man. You you know, why you need a man? He is an inter your intercessor. Is Jesus your intercessor? He will, uh, he will ask uh, his father to forgive you. No, Jesus, he forgave people on earth. He forgave. He said, go and your sin is forgiven. Jesus is not an intercessor. At least in that meaning. Jesus, he said to people, go and your sin is forgiven. And the Pharisees, they said to, to, to himself, who is this guy forgiving sin? What do you think he is? For nobody forgives sin, save God. So Jesus forgives sin. He did not do the work of intercession. Here we have a different problem. We have a person who is trying to be the intercessor for the Muslims. And he says that there is no intercession. There is no intercession. And then suddenly he put himself in the middle. Then he contradicted himself. As an example, in chapter 39, verse number 44, look what the Quran says, just to show you that this man is a, is a mad person. The intercession all is for Allah. What? So who are you then? To Allah belong exclusively the right, you see here, they put between the two brackets, the right to grant. <laughs> what right to grant? It doesn't say that. Belong to Allah all the intercession. So there's no intercession except Allah Himself intercede for you. So why Muhammad is speaking of himself as the hero of intercession? And why the other verse says, except the one who Allah allowed? What's that mean? 
it's a stupid logic it doesn't make sense very wavy flight of thought some verses there's no intercession some and for sure the muslim they will say to you oh let us read the interpretation we can read the interpretation and you will you will die laughing from the interpretation until now we could not find a muslim agree with muslims about interpretation for any verse in the quran this is why the muslim they say at the end of interpretation allah, and allah knows best why he say allah knows best because simply nobody knows it's a contradiction it's impossible if you remember when i debated dr rohi from al azhar university he said to me and you can play the video again go go back and watch it he said the books of tafsir which means interpretation is written to solve a problem i'm just quoting him exactly as he said to solve a problem what is the problem the problem is this book is stupid nobody can understand it to the point that every interpretation is different story from other interpretation it's like an, as if you are going to give an interpretation for a new book have nothing to do with the previous interpretation totally different so now all the inter, the, the intercession is exclusively exclu exclu is, is, is given to Allah and now suddenly we find that Muhammad is the one who can do intercession for you and then we find Muhammad saying except the one who Allah allowed so how you say to me it's only for Allah and then you say to me Muhammad can be intercession uh, uh, person for you stupid and you know, if he is not saying this word here that this is exclusive to Allah, I will let it go. Maybe I will say, okay, maybe he did not make it clear. He made it so clear. And how Allah is going to intercede? Don't you think this is a stupid statement that Allah will intercede? Intercede to who? Do you know what intercession means? I mean, do you Muslim believe in the Trinity? So the Son will intercede in front of the Father, maybe. Do you believe that there's more than one person, divine person? Or Allah is one God and he will not need interest because he is the only one who will make decision. And there's no, uh, he don't have a father. He don't have a, uh, th that's it. This is the person supposedly who is your God. So what he will intercede to how? Right? It's crazy and I cannot find anyone really can you know uh, uh, give us uh, uh, any kind of logic in anything they when when they speak about God and look at the Muslim text uh, you know uh, they call us pigs they call us monkeys they call us donkeys they call us whatever names they call us all the names but the fact a person who believed that God will give him a penis he is not a stupid supposedly and we are the stupid a person who is a human being in the year 2018 believe that God will make his penis in this he have no problem in his brain and we are the one who have a problem a person who believe that God he prepared for himself a lot of females and they are jailed in their tent for sex and their legs is wide open excuse my language he have no problem with it and we are the stupid ones a person who believe that he will go to the seven heaven 11 and he will live in a tent tent hey, obviously this is a Bedouin Arab heaven what tent tent in heaven there is tent i mean can't you come with something better are we camping there so they speak of logic they speak of intelligence but the fact everything in this religion is stupid i mean the second somebody says to me that we have a god who will provide us a lot of sex a lot of women for sex obviously this is idiot not only evil you see if you have if you if there is a person come to you and say I want to take you to the Playboy Mansion other person came to you and says I want to take you to Muhammad Mansion what is different between them I challenge anyone to tell me what the different nothing in the Playboy Mansion there is girls who you never met you never know you do not know their names or what you know they are very very beautiful and they are there for sex you do not even need to ask them their names in the mansion of Muhammad, which is a tent, there is women we never met, we never saw, or what we know that they call them whore, which means they are extremely white to the point you can see through their bones, which means they are jellyfish, and this is very stupid, very disgusting. But it's you know it's ex explained the mentality of the Arab who like white women extremely, to the point 
that Muhammad he says that when you go to heaven you will meet women who you can see through their bones if you read here we will find the stupidity of Muhammad appearing again you see stupidity is all not only in in, uh, in the logic of God in Islam but it, the, the teaching itself is a stupid look at this look at this madness how in the world somebody claimed to be a prophet he says such a stupid thing I mean explain to me read with me carefully hmm? so everyone will have two uh, wives from the holy and by the way sometime he will have 80,000 sometime two holies you don't even know what the number is because this guy he's idiot he he say different numbers then who, uh, who will uh, so beautiful and transparent a woman she is transparent now you ask yourself maybe transparent mean that she is honest she don't lie she don't fabricate she don't give you story like bad stories she don't cheat on you no it's not talking about that transparency you are thinking about it's talking about one kind of transparency that her body is a transparent why he is mentioning such a transparency for the for 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 the body because he is speaking about how wide they are to the point you see through the marrows of their bones you will notice that if you are a white person or you know somebody is white uh, the more white they are you can see even uh, see their vein and their you know in the under the skin you can see the blood under the skin so Muhammad is saying to them those women are not normal women they are so white to the point you can see through their bones I mean how stupid that is do really I need to be smart intelligent to know that this guy is a scam why in the world I will get a woman like this first it's ugly disgusting I don't want to see women Billy and what is inside the belly because if you can see what is inside the bones that's when you can see inside everything that's a disgusting that's mean I will see the I will see the blood running you see here uh, 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 here Muhammad he exposed his mentality which is trying to satisfy the Arab this is a religion made specifically for the Arab if you go to Europe European people they like Asian girls they like black African you know because everyone he liked the opposite of himself but Muhammad he is speaking to a certain group the Arab and the Arab are obsessed with white and then now nothing changed if you go to the Middle East if you go to the Middle East huh, uh, and there's a white girl and there's a like little dark skinned girl I guarantee you that the white girl she have like 1,000 better chance to get married from the one she have a darker skin I'm not talking about dark now black no I'm talking about darker the more white she is this is why you see the Muslims uh, in the Middle East they put a lot of a cream white and cream to the point you think they are just like white snow why because those people are obsessed with the white color so here the promises here is a clear proof that Muhammad is a scam what can imagine if Jesus says to us we will go to heaven and we will provide you with women you can see through the moral marrow of their bones how stupid that is how I can be from God and I say such a thing so look you know how we go there's no intercession and then Muhammad will intercede and when Muhammad intercede he go to heaven and when you go to heaven I will give you women who they have flesh which you can see through and if you want to get that you better believe in Muhammad don't you want to have that don't you have don't you want to have a river of wine and a river of milk don't you what's wrong with you why you don't want to have that don't you want to have endless number of boys who they are naked around you and they are so beautiful imagine even Muhammad he promised the Muslims that you would wear a bracelet have you ever heard of something promise such a thing we are going to wear a bracelet what what is that the details the details of the heaven of Muhammad is obviously a detail of an idiot he is trying to sell out a dream a fantasy chapter 18 verse number 31 as an example read with me carefully please and as you see this is Muslims translation which is absolutely far away from the true Arabic which is a lot more funny 
Okay, for them will be grand eternity. Beneath them rivers will flow. They will be adorned their end with the bracelet of gold. I mean, what? You are promising me in heaven I will wear a bracelet of gold. I can go and get one. I mean, what is the bracelet of gold price? What this guy is talking about? God, when I give me bracelet of gold? What the what is the value of gold in a in a land where everything is for free? You guys, do you know what I'm saying? Imagine, imagine I go to heaven and then you say to me, Well, you know what? I'm going to give you diamonds, I'm going to give you jewelries, I'm going to give you uh, rubies. I mean, this is stupid. I mean, this is heaven. What I will do with the diamonds and the gold? I will wear gold in heaven? A, a bracelet? Why? I'm a gay? What? What is this for? So all the logic you see here is very stupid, does not make sense. It's a promise for Bedouin who wish to have those things. Those are savage Bedouin who never take a shower. This is why you see it in the Hadith. If you go and look in the Hadith, you will see everybody is suffering from lies. Everybody, the whole town is under the invasion of uh, lies. Why? Because uh, this is a poor society, savage. They are not really civil. It's not a city. They are Bedouin, you know? There are people in the middle of a stage between going from Bedouin to, to, to town. You see, uh, 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 lice, lice, lice. The lice is running in the faces of the uh, of the believers, fading of his face. It's like the guy have a farm. And this is the case. Even Muhammad have lies. I remember once I was debating an idiot. His name is Osama Abdullah. He said to us, you Christians don't wash. This is why you are full of lies. I said to him, so are you saying the one who has full lies, he is filthy? He said, sure, absolutely. Don't you know how lies happen? You don't take a shower. Then when I showed him that his prophet have, is full of lies, then he started start saying, um, um, uh, um, uh, okay, I get to go. Hmm. Yeah, all right. So we are talking about a society, which is a poor society, and they have a dreams. They have a dreams to wear silk. They see the foreign, the the the, uh, the Persian. They see the Roman wearing silk when they go trade. The, the Arab they always do trade, so they go abroad and they see they see what people do. They knew about the silk. They saw silk. They saw gold. They saw bracelet of gold, but they don't have it unless they steal it. So you will wear a green garment. Now, why he is talking about the green garment? I mean, green garment in the heaven. It's like a surgery room. But because Muhammad is speaking to people who they are people of the desert. You see, if you speak to someone from Netherlands, I mean, for him, it's more beautiful if you take him to a desert to see the sand. He is sick of the green. He is in the land of the green. So now Muhammad is promising what you don't have. What you don't have? Green. What do you don't have? Rivers. They don't have rivers. All, all of, uh, of Saudi Arabia, there's not a single river, not a single one. So he promised them what they don't have, and then you will have a bed. You see, you, you say here to translate as a throne. It doesn't say a throne. It says beds. You will say you were sitting at the bed, and bed is an extreme promise for a Bedouin man who sleep in the floor, and 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 the bugs all over him, and the spiders and etc. And many people they die. There's a hadith about a person who die and he never wake up after sleep. Why? Because of the bugs, because of spiders and, and, and uh, uh, scorpion, etc. So uh, uh, this was a big concern for them. So now I'm going to give you resin beds. You sit on the top of them wearing green silk and you have bracelet of golds in your hand. And now, uh, not only this, Muhammad, he knew that uh, his, his followers are very uh, lazy. To the point he promised them that the fruits will come to you you see uh, uh, if you go in the verse here muhammad he says something very funny you don't go you don't you like you don't need to to extend 
uh, uh, your hand to get the fruits. The tree will bend down for you. Chapter 69, verse number 23. Well, what does that mean? Uh, you know, the tree is, is going down for you. The fruits will come down for you. You don't need to go and grab it. All right? You see it? Because he's speaking to the Arab, and they are very lazy people. By nature, I'm not. I'm speaking about my people. As you know, I'm not being discriminating anyone. Those are my people. I am an Arab. They are very lazy people, and they don't want to move. To, to the point we have a story about a, a bunch of Arab, they want to commit suicide, and then they were thinking about what is the best way to commit suicide without making any effort. So they said, okay, we go in the sea, and then we jump in the sea, or like we commit suicide by drowning. So they told the guy to take them to the middle of the sea. And then the guy, he said, okay, we are in the middle now. You want to jump? They said, can't you make the, the boat drown? Because they don't want to stand up. Like, can't you sink it? I mean, come on. So Muhammad, he knew exactly what kind of people he is. What do you mean a fruit branches, therefore, will be near the land, near the ground? What does that mean? I mean, why do you want to have that? How we can I walk between the trees if the, if the, if the branches are coming down? What is this is for? So everything you see in the front of uh, 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 in front of you is a silly, stupid promise. And like, what about in the, in the heaven? I'm going to go and I will have uh, uh, you know a, 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 an open buffet, and this buffet have only meat of birds. What what does that mean? Why Muhammad, he promised them meat of birds in the Quran, chapter 56, verse number 21. There's a reason. Everything in this book, it belongs to a reason. All right? Any fruit, and with the fruits, any that you may select. And then, and the flesh of birds. Flesh of birds, Allah promised me in heaven, so I will spend my eternity eating flesh of birds. There's no beef, there's no sheep, there's nothing, there's no camel meat. Why? Because the Arab, they love to eat birds' uh, meat. It's a lot tasty more than the, 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 the meat of the lizard. They used to eat lizard. You know, they eat what they is, is possible for them to hunt or to grow. That is camel. Camel meat is disgusting. They don't have really, you know, like a good meat, and especially the, because they grow in the desert, their their meat is so hard, is so tough. You know, it's, if if you want to cook it, it's going to take you maybe forever to cook that meat. So Muhammad he knew that the favorite meat for the Arab is the birds. So we'll be promised them, we promised them bird meat in the heaven. So you go to heaven now. Don't worry about camel meat, goat meat, etc. We will give you the best meat you like, easy to cook, very tasty, very nice. And now we have birds for you. So you open the buffet of Allah and you find yourself eating birds for eternity. And here, if you if you read, you know, like, I mean, uh, the whole chapter is a joke. And this is all over, reclining, you know, you will be sitting in the top of a couch and you will be reclining. I mean, have you ever heard of somebody Speaking of such a promise, I will be reclining off a couch. This is God talking. Remember, this is not Muhammad talking. Suppose this is Allah. Allah is saying to me, I will recline in a couch. What? What is that? This is the most, I'm talking about the God Almighty. The one who created the whole universe. The creator of the whole universe is now describing for me the couch he will give me. It's like a, it's like a, 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 a guy who works in sales store for furniture. You know what I mean? How that can happen? What is this? This is God? This is the quality of God. God is describing for me in the couch I will sit in. God is saying to me, I will give you. Uh, hold on. And here, look at this one here. Reclining on them and facing each other. Like what? The Arab, you know, the Arab, they like to have like, a, let us say, uh, they like to talk. They, they, are, they are talking people. You know, this is why Arabic language 
uh, is very rich with words because those are talking people not doing they talk a lot this they, they do nothing that's why you go in the Middle East you see nothing is done they keep saying we will do this we will do this we will do it like you go somebody will say to me do you know like uh, how advanced Emirat Emirat is not advanced because of the Arab Emirat is advanced because of the foreigners the percentage of the Arab to the foreigners is not even one to ten thousand you walk in Emirati, you don't see Emirati people, you see only foreigners, British, English, uh, American, you name it, Russian. There is no Arab in Emirat. The whole country is foreigners. This is why they opened the country and the country became advanced. Otherwise, the country, if they did not open it this way, is going to be the same as Saudi Arabia. Until now, in Saudi Arabia, more than 80% don't, don't, don't know how to write, how to read. So here, this God is promising the Arab the promises which is very stupid and then he discussed for with us something more disgusting the arab they like to have sex with little children and this is transformed with islam to afghanistan and pakistan as, as an example you can go and search in youtube for uh, i think they call it uh, baza bachi something like this i forgot the name they bring a guy or a boy and they dress him as a girl and they put makeup on him and he dance for them and they touch his bum he touch you know the sexual thing and then after that they have sex with the boy and this is a very well-known tradition taliban there is a documentary in the bbc about taliban the head of taliban he do that the mujahideen of allah those are the believers not the the savage so those supposed to be the high quality believers with the long beard they bring a boy dance for them and touch him and play with him and then at the end of the party they have sex with the boy this is islam heaven of allah is going to be like that and you will see that allah is describing for us that those boys are very beautiful they are very white they are white like pearls so allah forgive not if you commit taking partner with him but Allah forgive in different verses even if you take partner with him and then Allah will never forgive if you take partners unless you ask intercession from Muhammad and then Allah will forgive you if you intercede through Muhammad to give you this the young boys bracelet children to have sex with women who have their vagina never been touched I mean have you ever heard of God he promised such a promise Women, she have a vagina never been used. This was the whole story. And then Allah will make her vagina brand new again. Because the Quran speak, and if you have my book, uh, Six and Allah, go and get from Amazon. Uh, you can search for my books, by the way, by just going to Amazon.com and search for Christian Prince. You will find the list of all my books in all languages. The promises of virgins is not about a woman. She will be virgin before you sleep with her or no. If you go to my book, you will see the reference that each time you sleep with the women, Allah will make her virgin again, which means nothing but except sickness. I mean, why does God want to make this woman virgin again? What the point? I just step with her. I mean, it's not even real. Because if I step with the woman, she's not virgin. So who cares about this little piece of flesh or skin inside her private part? They care, the Arab, they enjoy ripping that part. The man he feel like he is the man he is the first so Muhammad is speaking to them in their mentality he is an evil man he knew what is going to be satisfying for them I will give you versions and each time you sleep with them Allah will make them virgin again and not only that if you have my book you will see where it says that each time you sleep with those women the women they will say to you you are the best you are the best in what I'm not I don't want to speak dirty you know what I'm talking about right Allah Want to be sure, supposedly, Aka Muhammad, that the man have full satisfaction in heaven. So now you sleep with the women, but this woman, she might be not satisfied. Don't worry. Each time you sleep with one of them, the women, she will say, to you, you are the best. Look, hold on, hold on. What do you mean she is the, she's the best? If she is a virgin, she never slept with the man, how he is the best? This is remind me of what Aisha she said in the hadith. Aisha she said, that who is the one can control his penis like Muhammad? What? Who of you can control his penis like Muhammad? What do you mean who of you? How, how Aisha she knew that Muhammad is the best to control his penis or he is the best to have penis or the best who have us uh, like uh, control his sexuality? 
if Aisha supposedly, according to all hadith, she never have a man before Muhammad and never have a man after Muhammad, how this woman she is comparing between the penis of Muhammad and the penis of the rest? Any Muslim can explain to us? And you see here, the Muslim translation says, who had control over his desire? It doesn't say that. Irabahu is his sexual part, his penis. This is why always I say to you, when you read Muslim translation, Muslim translation far away from what is written in Arabic. There's no desire, no worry. The desire it says, it says, who of you control his private sexual part? And we are trying to be, you see here, look, look, look how here it changed. Here it says, control his sexual desire. If you go up, sexual desire is gone. Control his desire. If you go up, the same hadith it's the same hadith you know had over his desire where is the word where is the word sexual is gone okay control his desire it doesn't say control his desire it says control his penis control his sexual organ so i she said who of you have such a power who how i she knew how you can compare if you never have other partners unless you are sleeping around so the wife in the heaven she will do what Aisha she did in the heaven each time you sleep with the women the women before you finish she will say to you you are the best this is why in the Quran it says the following you know Muhammad he knew that men the Arab men they are very jealous and they are a kind of uh, they like to own you you know they like to own the women and because they like to own the women Muhammad he fulfilled their, their their desire hold on don't worry about those women those women they will be jailed for you they will not see any other man this is why they cannot compare between you and other man they are jailed totally jailed all right those who are guarded in their prevalence. What does that mean? It doesn't say that actually. It says, maqsuratun fil khiyam. They are jailed inside their tents. So those women, they will never see a man except you. Those women, their eyes will not see another male except you. Those women, they will never have sexual experience with anyone except you. Because of that, you are the best. Obviously, that this man, Muhammad, he is designed in heaven to fit with the Arab mentality. Otherwise, who can explain to me this? Why my wife in heaven will be jailed in the tent? Explain to me. I am in heaven. And in heaven, do we have sin? I mean, as people go into sin there? Why the women are jailed? Is she going to cheat on me? What what does this mean? This is disgusting. And not only is disgusting, it is it is not fair. I mean, why the women should be jailed? So you are saying to me now you are going to create 80, 90,000 women and they will be jailed for eternity, or what they do, they have no panty. Is that a life? Is that really heaven? This is the most disgusting promise ever. So what the Quran focus in that if you do take partner with me to make it short and Allah will not forgive you then he contradict himself says no no Allah will forgive you then he says no 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 Allah will not forgive you unless you ask Muhammad for intercession and then no 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 uh, you, you have to repent and then he said no 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 the only one he can forgive you is the one who intercedes for you and that is Muhammad to the point Muhammad he said that the Christians and the Jews they ask each one of them they ask his prophet for intercession but nobody will give an intercession except me so Muhammad is the one only he, your way to heaven is Muhammad Muhammad is God is your God 
this is what Muhammad trying to say you want to go to heaven you want to get the versions you want to get the private part you want to get the white skin you want to get the flesh bones you can see through the morals you want to get the bracelet you want to get the 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 right the risen bed you want to get the the green silk you want to get the fruits with the trees walking trees coming down to you with the fruit you want to eat the bread with done by barbecue by saying the secret word alhamdulillah all of this you want to get it it's through Muhammad he is the one who will intercede for you and you will not get that unless you say the Shahada and what is the Shahada the Shahada itself is associating God with a man look how much contradiction with this stupid religion they say to you the way to go to heaven is to worship Allah alone and then they say you have to say Shahada which is what which is associating the name of a man with the name of God why I cannot say okay I believe in Allah and go to heaven no you have to say there's no God but Allah and there's no prophet but Muhammad what does that mean why you put the name of Muhammad next to the name of Allah because Allah and Muhammad is one person but Muhammad because he knew if he exaggerate and says that he is God nobody will they don't even believe in him even when he claimed to be a prophet so imagine if he claimed to be God what will happen so what Muhammad did, the method is very simple. I claim I'm prophet, but I claim I am the only way to go to heaven. I claim I am the only way to give you the flying, the, the birds, the cooked birds, the vagina, the big. Imagine he promised them that the, your, your, your wife, she will have one mile ass. I mean, what the heck? One mile ass? If you have my books, you will see how funny the description of men and women in heaven, how tall they will be and how thin they will be. Men and women in heaven, Islam, they will look like a worm. They are very tall, but very thin. So this is a very stupid religion, and everything in it does not make sense. Uh, uh, I hope, guys, my, my broadcast came true. I mean, came good. The voice is good. And I will try to do more like where I am right now. The, uh, the internet is good. I hope so. I did not see the result yet, but I think it's good. So I hope everything worked good from your side. And please, if you are a Muslim, leave your comment and tell me what's wrong with this religion. Promise of virgins, vagina, bracelets, gold, silver, rubies. I mean, what I would do with the rubies? I would go to the mall and buy something. Yes, actually, you know, if you go in, in, the, in the hadith, you will see Muhammad says something very funny. Let's see if we can find it. In the heaven, he said, there is a, there is a, uh, there's a market. And in this market, the only thing you can buy there, if you read with me, Indeed, in the paradise, there is a market which is there is no buying nor selling except images for men and women. And if you like the image, whenever a man he desire the image, he enter it. This is a Playboy magazine, but in the fiction fantasy side, like the the new uh, virtual, but supposedly it is a reality. So in this market of Muhammad in heaven, there's a market. There's a bazaar. There is buying and there is selling. Yes, there is, but not for any product except images. You go inside the bar market, and then what do you do? You check those images. If you like any image of those images, you jump in it and you have sex with whoever is inside the image. Now, this is God. This is heaven. This is religion. Or obviously, this is madness and stupidity and fictions and fantasy of people who they are possessed with sexual desire, and Muhammad trying to drive to drive them, try try to control them by their desire. It's like somebody he cannot stop eating, and now I promise him more sandwiches. So you will go to heaven and look here what he says in the in this heaven. Not only you will have sex, you will have sex with men and women because read carefully. 
In this heaven, what there, what there is? In this heaven, there is men and women. In this market, sorry. The images is for men and women. But the customer is a man. So whenever a man desire an image, he enter it. Enter what? Enter the image. To do what with it? To have sex with it. Now the Muslim, they will say to you, it's daif, uh, I don't accept, oh, all this garbage. Because simply it's very embarrassing. The Prophet said, the Prophet said this for 14 centuries and no one says and complain about it. But now because we start exposing them, they start saying it's daif. Oh, this is not strong. What Islam is daif. Islam is a weak religion, a stupid religion. This is in total agreement with everything in the Quran. Boys, women, virgins, sex, birds, etc. So now Allah, he created for you more entertainment. He created a lot of women for you, but you want more maybe, right? Huh? Okay, you might get bored with the women you have, no problem. We created for you a bazaar, a mall. The mall have a lot of images. My friend, just go there, flip the images. If you like an image of any man, he is handsome, like the hill can be the boyfriend of Muhammad. Jump in it and have sex with the man. If you like women, jump in the image of a woman and have sex. If the image have six men and women together, have sex group. Men and women together, have fun. This is heaven of Las Vegas. I want to say thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And I hope I will do podcast maybe tomorrow. And they will see you soon again, or maybe even tomorrow. Uh, today, I actually, I don't, I'm not sure. If I have time, I will do that. But until I see you again, I may the Lord bless you all and open the eyes of the Muslims. We don't hate Muslims, and we are not speaking against the Muslims. We are speaking about a cult, which is obviously drive people by desire, sexuality, money. And this is the source of, you know, source of all evil is desire. You see, especially if the desire is driving you, not your your mind, not your thought. The old Islam, all of Islam is about desire. It's about how I can earn more to satisfy a food desire, sexual desire. And here you will find the huge difference between Christianity and Islam, where in Christianity it's focused in spiritual happiness. Jesus said in heaven there is no marriage. There's no he and she, they will be the same as angels. Same as angels, what does that mean? It means we are free of temptation and we are free of needs. Temptation here is coming from the needs. I need sex, I need food, I need money. I need, it's a need. In order to get something, I need something. So in, in, in the heaven of Jesus, you are free. You are the same as angel who do not need, who do not need sex, who do not need food, who do not need jewelries who do not need to work to make money for happiness there have different level it's a spiritual amazing happiness it's, it cannot be described any happiness based on physical happiness is temporary you cannot eat forever you cannot have sex forever this is why muhammad he said in the in his promises that the muslim man in the heaven he will have an orgasm of 70 years 70 years orgasm yes you have to exaggerate because you know, you want to have orgasm for five seconds, but the, what if you think about it, what the difference between orgasm for 70 years or seven seconds? The pleasure is the same. Because at the end, 70 years, you will finish, and then you will start having sex again. So extending the orgasm will not make any difference. Imagine you go to visit Zakir Naik, and you knock at the door, Zakir Naik having orgasm. You come the year after, Zakir Naik still cannot see you. You have orgasm. You come two years after, Zakir Naik still having orgasm. You know, so orgasm will continue for 70 years. So what, the orgasm is 70 years, the sex is two minutes? <laughs> and yet they want to say to us that Islam is from God. Thank you guys for watching. May the Lord bless you. And if I can uh, do broadcast again, I will, I will, uh, I will make uh, a schedule for it. So it's going to appear in my channel until then. If not today, maybe tomorrow if I can. Uh, I say to you, may the Lord bless and see you soon again. Christ is Lord, Islam is false. And to read more, to know more, to learn more, 
get my books from amazon.com search for christian brands and may the lord bless you thank you bye-bye